So 6.4 is related rates, and this is the first part of related rates, and that's on pages 281 to 285 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of the application of derivatives to solve problems including optimization, rates of change, and related rates. So there we are. And our lesson objective is today, number one, to be able to identify a related rates problem. And number two, to be able to apply implicit differentiation to answer a related rates problem. So recall that the derivative can be considered as the rate at which something occurs if you're taking the derivative with respect to time. So if you had an equation that described the distance an object travels, then we said the derivative would then be the velocity. So if we said the distance was x, then dx over dt would be the change in x over the change in time, which would be the velocity. Today we're going to be using this concept along with the Pythagorean theorem to help us find out how fast two objects are moving apart, or I guess closer together, if they're moving at right angles to each other. So what I mean is that if we have a point here, and we have one object moving north and one object moving east, um, a different velocity, say this was at 10 kilometers an hour and this one happened to be at 15 kilometers an hour, then we can find out the rate at which they're actually moving apart. So that would be the hypotenuse. So we could figure out the rate at which they're actually moving apart at any specific moment in time. And that's what we're going to have to be using uh, implicit differentiation for. So you have to remember that if either x or y happen to be getting shorter, so if one of these things happens to be um, going towards this, uh, this vertex here, then their derivative will have to be considered negative. So here's our first example. It says two ships approach the same harbor, one moving south at a rate of 10 kilometers an hour and the other moving east at a rate of 15 kilometers an hour. How is the distance between them changing when both are three kilometers from the harbor? So if we've got our harbor here, one's moving south at 10 kilometers an hour. Now we said if that distance is going to be decreasing, we're going to have to include a negative here. So we're going to make that negative. And this one is moving this way at 15 kilometers an hour. That's also negative because it's getting shorter. So the question asks, how is the distance between them? So the distance between them is the hypotenuse. And how is that changing, which is a big word, when both are three kilometers from the harbor? Well, we also know that this is uh, three kilometers away and this is three kilometers away. So we definitely have a right triangle going on here because one's moving south, one's moving east. So we can use uh, something called the Pythagorean theorem. Now I'm gonna write it as x squared plus y squared equals z squared. You've seen it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But x, because that's what we use for horizontal usually, and y, because that's what we use for vertical, and then z would be the hypotenuse part. Well, right now this is just a distance equation. I can use that distance equation to find the distance between the two points, and I do need to do that, so I'll do that right off the bat here. So I've got three squared plus three squared equals z squared. So that's nine plus nine, which is 18 equals z squared. And so z is equal to three root two when you take the square root of both sides. That's really important. So that's a distance of three root two kilometers. And the reason I'm not writing it as a decimal is because I want to be as exact as possible. Now, since we have these velocities and we're looking for how the distance between these two is changing, then we are gonna try and compare the velocity here and the velocity here with the velocity on the hypotenuse. And what we're going to do then is take the derivative of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, we can do that as long as we take the derivative of everything with respect to time. So we're going to take d dt, d over dt of x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So here's where implicit differentiation comes in. Um, if I'm going to take the derivative of this, it's going to be 2x, but I don't have a t in here. That's what this means, the derivative with respect to time. So I have to write in dx dt. Over here, it's going to be 2y dy dt, because I don't have a, uh, a t in this part of the equation either. And here, it's going to be 2z dz dt. Now, each of these things has a 2 in it. So they're all divisible by 2. So I can just write that as x times dx over dt plus y over dy over dt equals z times dz over dt. Now the thing is, this dx over dt, that's the change in x over the change in time, and that's your velocity. That's the negative 15 kilometers an hour. And our x is the actual length, because we said x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Well, x is that length. So I get three times negative 15 plus y, which also happens to be three, times negative 10, because that's how y is changing. It's changing at a rate of negative 10 kilometers an hour. And z, which is three root two, times dz over dt. Well, we don't know that, and that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find how the distance between them is changing. 
So I'm just going to move up over here. I've got negative 45 minus 30, which is negative 75, equals 3 root 2 dz over dt. I divide both sides by 3 root 2, and I find my change in z with the change in time. That's the distance, how the distance between them is changing, is negative 17.7 kilometers an hour. So implicit di differentiation really helps when you're finding the derivative of the Pythagorean theorem, which you need to find because we have we are given here the change in x over the change in time and the change in y over the change of time. We're also given x and y, which we help find z, and we are just looking for dz over dt. And so that differentiation um, of that equation is really important. So one more similar question. It says a dog running towards a tree at a rate of six meters per second is chasing after a cat. The cat is climbing the tree at a rate of one meter per second. How is the distance between them changing when the dog is two meters from the tree and the cat is 1.5 meters up the tree? So the dog's running towards a tree. So if this is a tree right here, that means that its distance is getting smaller towards this, this point. So that means it has a negative velocity, negative 6.0 meters per second. And the, tree, the cat who's running away from this point would have a positive velocity then of 1.0 meters per second. So it says, how is the distance between them changing? So again, we're looking for the distance between them changing. So we're looking for dz over dt. We don't know that. But we do know now that this is dx over dt. And we do know that this is dy over dt. It's change in y over change in time, change in x compared to the change in time. How is the distance between them changing when the dog is two meters from the tree? Well, we know x is equal to two meters then. And the cat is 1.5 meters up the tree. We know that y is equal to 1.5. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find out what z is. And I did that, and I found out that it was 2.5. So now when we um, use the now when we use the uh, derivative of the Pythagorean theorem, we know that we get x dx over dt plus y dy over dt equals z dz over dt. We can just plug in our numbers. So we get two times negative six plus one point five times one equals uh, two point five times dz over dt. So negative 12 plus 1.5 is negative 10.5 equals 2.5 dz over dt. We divide them both by 2.5 and we get our change in z compared to time, so that's hypotenuse, equaling negative 4.2 meters per second. And that negative, all that, that means is that this distance is getting smaller. And that should make sense since the dog's running at 6 meters per second and the cat's only running at 1 meter per second, that this um, distance in between them would be getting smaller. So in summary, we know that when you take the derivative of an equation with respect to time, you need to be sure to use your knowledge of implicit differentiation. And remember that if the distance is decreasing, the derivative of that length will be negative. And that would be like dx over dt, which would be the derivative of x with respect to time. So your assignment on pages 284 to 285. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.